Hello and welcome back. We are continuing our series on numerically calculating all the psychrometric properties of moist air. And let me remind you where we've come. We've already calculated out the specific humidity ratio, mu, the degree of saturation, relative humidity, and what we have left of the important things, there's a few things that'll be filler calculations, but what we really want is specific volume, which is typically denoted by the Greek letter nu, H for enthalpy, and the dew point temperature. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and cover the specific volume. So in most and almost all instances, when we're talking about specific volume, we are talking about the volume divided by the mass of the dry air. And we most of these properties in psychrometrics are going to be divided by the mass of dry air if they're a specific type of psychrometric property. And that's because in a psychrometric pr process, so if you're heating or cooling moist air, there's the chance that you're either going to take out moisture, dehumidify, or humidify. But it, and it's very rare, unless you're splitting ducts, but if you're in a straight run of ducts, that you're taking out dry air. And so in a process like that, the dry air, the mass flow rate of the dry air doesn't change. And so it's really nice so that you don't have to worry about this bottom of this fraction changing all the time in most processes. And so that's why that decision has been made that when we're talking specific volume or uh, specific density or anything like this, it's, it's the mass of the dry air that's important. So our goal here is to get a relationship for nu as a function of the dry bulb temperature, the total pressure, and the specific humidity ratio omega. So that's our end goal here. One thing we also know in re with regards to this is that the dry air follows the ideal gas law. So if we do this and we do this with mass and not the number of moles, we have the mass of the dry air that's going to require us to use the specific gas constant for dry air and we have temperature and again this is absolute units because we don't have a temperature difference here it's important that this be an absolute temperature units now hopefully you can see that we can rearrange this ideal gas equation we can equate it to this specific volume so if we take this mass term and we move that to the bottom of this fraction we take this pressure and we move it over here we'll get something where nu equals this which is going to be these two things all over the pressure partial pressure of the dry air now again our goal was to get it into the total pressure because this is a lot easier to measure than this partial pressure of dry air so we can also rewrite this as the total pressure minus the partial pressure of the vapor everything that was not well everything that's h2o we want to also use specific humidity ratio and we have a relationship that relates specific humidity ratio the total pressure and the partial pressure of vapor and if you remember this is an important equation that falls out because of the ideal gas law we have 0.622 partial pressure of the vapor all over partial pressure of dry air, but we can do this subtraction the same way we did over here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to solve for the partial pressure of vapor over here, and then we're going to substitute that in, and then we will be left with algebra to get a function in the form that we would like. So our first step will be to rearrange this equation. So let's take this bottom of the fraction and move it to the other side. So if I do that, I would get something that looks like, and I'm going to distribute out. Well, actually, let me not distribute out right away. Let's take it step by step again. Don't want to rush too many steps. And now if I distribute out on the left hand side, I would have omega P 
PT minus omega PV equals 0 0.622 partial pressure. I'm going to move this term to the other side. I have to add it over here, and I'm going to, but I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip the sides of the equation a little bit. And we'll, so you would have 0 0.622 plus omega, and that would be equal to omega times the total pressure on that side. And so if we now divide by this term, we have omega times the total pressure divided by 0 0.622 plus omega. So let's go ahead and take this equation and substitute it in here. So this PV we're going to replace with this formulation. So it's going to look a little nasty on the bottom of the fraction to start, but we'll take care of that. So if we do that, we have the gas constant for dry air times absolute temperature, and that's over total pressure minus this term here. So let me put that in brackets. And let me just continue this fraction on a little bit. Let me close that off. What I want to do is uh, combine these two terms, and so I need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply and divide this term by 0.62 plus omega, and then we'll we'll subdue that subtraction. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we have this times the bottom of the other terms denominator minus omega pt all over that denominator let's go ahead and let's take this part and we're gonna move that to the top of the fraction that's gonna get rid of one of these extraneous fraction bars and if i do that i would get something that looks like uh, R D A T and now we'll have that bottom of that fraction that we had I circled in blue and what we're still left with is the total pressure times 0 0.622 plus omega and then we have minus omega times the total now hopefully you can see that we have a plus, if I would distribute this out, I have a p positive omega PT and I have a negative here. And so actually those terms will cancel out. So that omega with that, that PT. And so what I'm left with now, I know this is quite a bit of steps, but it's always to me useful to, to know that someone did derive this correctly in the textbooks. So now I have 0 0.622 P. And we could leave this equation in this form, or I've also seen it where they go through and divide both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 0 0.622. And so if I did that, we'll have our big hurrah. So if the bottom you divided by 0 0.622, you would just get rid of that. And because we are distributing with two terms here, uh, we'll take the 622 out of this one and this imaginary one. Remember, we're dividing. So if I did that, if you divide 0.622 by 0.622, you get 1. And if you take 1, 1 divided by 0.622 gives you this other magic number, 1.6078 or so times omega. And that's all divided by the total pressure. And if you don't like to use the specific gas constant, you could take the you could take the universal and divide it by the molecular weight of dry air, which is around twenty eight point nine six four. And if I have the units, that would be kilograms per kilomole. And so at this point, we now have a relationship that we can solve for our specific, hum uh, sorry, not specific humidity, specific volume. And the units on that, if we're in SI, would be meters cubed per 
kilogram of dry air. So in the next videos, we're going to finally get to the end of this. We have enthalpy, which is straightforward because that's just a uh, an approximation function, not much to derive. And the same thing with the dew point temperature. So I hope you found this algebra interesting to say the least and uh, see you in the next videos.